Oh, it is your host as always, me, the master of Viva Kiyoma, speaking to you. Uh, today, uh, talking about basically the episode to that newest episode of Sword Art Online that happened, and kind of explaining how. Okay, I'm not going to explain the ending with Kirito, mainly why Kirito probably saw all those flashbacks and everything it is. Now I have the light novels up on my shelf, you've probably seen them in the background a couple times. I don't know, but my parents were focused that hard. But one thing people don't get, because the Sword Art Online adaptations suck a lot, and the only time they've gotten good like recently is the this one, the Alakization arc, which I will make a video explaining why Alakization is probably one of the best arcs in the entire thing, is Kirito actually has a lot of guilt. I mean, when you really sit about it, Kirito killed a couple people and doesn't even know their names. He even states that, I think, in Season 2 on the GGO arc. He asked for forgiveness. I mean, there's a couple scenes like, yeah, he killed the one dude, which was part of the Laughing Coffin. He was part of the Laughing Coffin raid, which he killed, I think, I say, like three people. And then he was responsible. No, he's not responsible, but he feels responsible to the point where he was death seeking in season when the guild died. And the one guy killed himself right in front of him by jumping off the bridge. So Kirito's seen like a lot of death. Sword Art Online kind of like broke him. To a degree, but I honestly think the only reason he made it through Sword Online, the hellish nightmare that he did, was thanks to a few other characters. Now it's fleshed out a lot more in the auxiliary works and them, but he actually became a bit of a death seeker. Like, I mean, the episode, the Christmas episode, where he's literally looking for a revive item, that was him in the book wanting to die. Like, he just wanted to die. He was so guilt ridden because of. What happened to the guild and that and that Klein basically coming up always saying trying to stop him like hey you're not responsible for all that made sense and then he finds the item and he can't use it because you can only use it after 10 seconds after someone died he just throws the clients like here and then he's lucky lucky which i don't know how you could do this you give someone a timed item i don't know if that's the thing in mmos i don't play a lot of mmos if you can get someone an item that just pops in their inventory like at a certain date and it's basically something that rid him of his guilt, not completely. Which was Sachi saying that, you know, knowing I'm probably gonna die if you see this. Basically a uh, goodbye-ish if she was dead. And that ridded him of some of his guilt, but it still doesn't. And GGO, he actually does actually have post-traumatic stress disorder. So him ending up in a wheelchair just almost catatonic to a degree. Now his self-image being destroyed when the lightning thing kind of makes sense. Yu-Gi-Oh had just died in front of him. Yu-Gi-Oh was literally his rock keeping him sane in Underworld because you got to remember they thought they stuck him in Underworld with the, as a blank slate. Like his memory, no, he had all his memories of the real world. So the whole time you're fighting, like if you're in Alice in Wonderland, literally, you're like, why am I here? Why am I here? I don't have access to all this. I have all this stuff. So I'm constantly lying to my best friend. Like they can't tell I'm from the real world. Who <laughs> believe me? You think I was insane? The only person he ever told was Cardinal, and she died right in front of him. Uh, Charlotte, who was a little spider. Ugh, that spider. It shows up in the game. That's even freaky, even in the anime. Then I freaked out. I have arachnophobia to the highest degree, and that was the goal. one freakiest thing ever. Like, I mean, please, please get off my screen. Get off my screen, spider, spider, spider. I know you're important. Just, just get off my screen. Sad that it dies, and this is an NPC. It doesn't even have a fluck light, which made it more horrible because it was like a, a blank character that gained a conscious and gained self awareness. Which was absolutely too, pretty horrible because then Kirito's like, is there a fuck like? We can save it. And he's like, no. And then the card's like, no. It was just a blank NPC program that I created that gained self awareness. You can't bring it back. It's gone. And that guilt ridden him again because he realized Charlotte was on his shoulder, always watching throughout the entire two years he'd been there. That was horrifying. And then Yujiro flat out dies in front of him along with Alice's, the real Alice's might be memory by turning into a giant sword. And also, let's not forget, he was cut in half. So, not only is he faced with a lot of guilt at the time, because, yeah, Kirito, massive guilt complex, I'd almost say. It's no wonder he mind crushes. At the end of season one of the Iron Clan, the accusation, he, 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 he mentally mind breaks. Be, because he can handle it. Not just, not just that, he's flipping out when he's talking to the one guy, scientist guy who dropped him in there, asshole. Um, and... He's flipping out, then they cut the power, and it, it makes sense. It literally does. And I love it when they find out in the real world, 
he's been aware for two years. They're like, two years have kind of passed in this world, and <laughs> we take say Zasna, he's been really aware the whole time. We did we accidentally forgot to lock away his memories. I'm just like, you idiot. You idiot, you idiot. And then they're like, yeah, by the way, um, some of his friends just died on the way that they were finding out it was a church. It's like offhanded comment. I'm like, and Asana and the one woman doctor, I can't think of her name off the bat, are just like, uh, that's not a good thing, dude. That's the, it's, it's, it's gonna break. And the opening for this current season kind of gives us away how Kirito's gonna wake up because you have, you know, Asana, Shion, and them, uh, and Leafa throughout their, throughout their in real life and them. The reason he woke up, but quite technically, I found it hilarious, even in the light novel they did this. That wasn't going to be enough. He's just like, no, 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 I, I don't. I deserve to die. If Yujiro hadn't literally popped up because he remained in the item, well, he didn't remain in the item, a, a fragment of his soul remained in the item, his blue sword, Kirito really would have just given up right there. This anime adaptation was pretty brutal. He's seen they're ripping his heart out. And the whole time I'm wondering, how long were you being psychologically tormented like that? Because I think it's been six months, I believe, since the final battle of the Amateur when he got mind crushed. And that. So, yeah, I mean, if it was not for Yujiro coming up there and literally saying, basically, it's okay, You're, my death was not your fault. Like, unlike all these other people, he's like, I kind of like, I chose to die. It's, it, it really was not your fault. Stop blaming yourself. So, really, yeah, but honestly, the girls. Wouldn't have woken up. It really would have took somebody like Yu-Gi-Oh or probably Alice, not Alice since the three, the third, the night. No, it really would have probably either took Alice or Alice or Yu-Gi-Oh popping up in his mind and saying, what happened was not your fault. It was out of your hands. You know what I mean? And Yu-Gi-Oh even probably says, I chose to die. You know what I mean? In the book, it's even more elaborated on a little bit more because that seems pretty big in the book. But this isn't the book. I'll never review the book on its own. But I just want to talk about how this scene makes sense. Him waking up, he just becomes... I'm just going to spoil it. He becomes deus ex machina. That's the only thing. The greatest scene in the entirety of the Iron Grad art, apart from that, was... It, it, well, in Kirito, apart from the... Up to the breaks, one favorite of that world was that specific scene. Because it does address a lot of the problems they had. Throughout the arcs, up to the oxidation arcs, Kirito had had a lot of guilt building up inside of it. And I love this scene is it shows all the Ironcrad stuff that happened. Of course, we knew that. And then you see, I forgot about all the um, 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 evil scientist dude that trapped Asuna with the thing. Um, I can't think of his name. Shugaha, Shugaha or something. Shugo, I don't know. That one crazy dude who Kirito almost stabbed in the parking lot season one. I was like, because he was literally a get off my screen character for me. And then I was like, oh, wow, yeah, that's right. That was when we found out the pain receptor thing that was never brought up again. It was like addressed and never brought up again. Yeah, 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 Kirito, you kind of tortured him. You cut him in half, then you, well, first you cut off his arm, then you cut him in half, then you cut him in the face. And then in the real world, he's all messed up, nervously. I'm like, yeah, Kirito, you even killed somebody somewhere in the real world to a degree. Well, you didn't kill him, you almost did in the parking lot, but you kind of messed him up neurologically because of the thing. Because let's not forget, um, Ak Kayaba showed up and like, it gave him full administrator privileges and Kirito just takes this rage out on the guy and there you go. That, yeah. And then you flip to the Gungale online arc, which was great by the way. I, I, I that, that arc was like one of the better adapted ones. And then you see him fighting, uh, Death Gun. Although, you know, that one when I saw in the adaptation, like, yeah, he didn't torture him like he did the one guy in Alfheim or dead there. But yeah, that was a ghost of his past coming back to just, you know, because what guy Def Gun did was just like, yes, but you spent a year trying to forget what you did in Aincrad. Because, um, and then you see the accusation arc, which is basically this, when he woke up and all the events that lead up to it. I also forgot to mention, Vorbital Strike. I love that move. I even spammed the crap out of that move most of the thing. It's, I would mention it one thing. The reason why Kirito in that previous season, the very first season of allocation, was hesitant on using it, because Vorbal Strike, that move is what made him iconic as the Black Swordsman. That's why when he appeared, he used it, he appeared in a, his uh, 
black coat. He was the black swordsman. Vorpal Strike was his signature move, like his go-to move. Like he, it was his. Everybody knew him in Ironcraft because of Vorpal Strike. So when he kills Tadolkin, which yes, he actually, I honestly, the two nobles, which deserve to die. So I don't blame you, Kirito. Those nobles, what happened in Ironcraft, deserve to die. Yeah, good riddance them. They're dead. Kirito, you, you, you so did a good job on killing those nobles for what they were going to do to your uh, assistants. I don't even need to go in there. Then you're killing Jadolkin, which... Ugh, Jadolkin. Well, get off my screen as well, but in a horrible way. Yeah, Borbal Strike. Yeah, I can't, I can't tell you even kills like three people in um, this... The Underworld. So yeah, that, that's also adding on to the bodies he has. So he's slowly building guilt. And then Yu-Gi-Oh dies. So it makes sense. Oh, wait, no, wait. He kills the Administrator, and then Yu-Gi-Oh dies. Or Yu-Gi-Oh dies in the Administrator. Regardless. Massive guilt. Why explode it? But yeah, Borbal Strike. That's why, um, I think even Def Gun makes fun of him to a degree. Like, the old you would have laughed at your fighting skill now. You've become rusty. I bet you spent two a year trying to run away from your past of all the people you feel. Do you even remember what happened then? And Kirito, like, you know, like I said, he suffered throughout this. It's really, I got it that almost nobody suffers massive guilt in it. Like, Asuna, none of them. Well, they kind of do, but Kirito gets the short end of the stick the most. Like, he... Well, then again, he is praised as the hero of Sword Art Online to a degree, but he kind of doesn't want that title. It's like, I don't want that title. And let's not even forget, in the Sword Art Online the very first season, which was horribly outdated, he basically took the blame. He took the blame. He's like, yeah, yeah, I cheated. I'm a beater. Whatever. And he became a martyr, so everyone would stop blaming all the other baby characters. So let's focus on this dude. So, yeah, not only was he hated there, he was hated everywhere. So, it's, 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 Kirito does have layers, but he's always constantly written as a Mary Sue. So it's constantly. That's why I liked him the best in Alkazation arc and the Gungale Online arc. Because honestly, he didn't seem particularly Mary Sue ish. And even then, and I loved also the Vorpal Strike, how he was hesitant to even use that in this, in the Alkazation arc. Because, like I said, it's his signature move. That's why when he used it on Chadolkin, who deserved to die, by the way, I'm glad that guy died. Oh, I'm not self versus but no, no, he's he, 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 a horrible person. Horrible person. Get off my screen. But uh, that's why he imaged that. And even when he used it on the... Yeah, every time he used Formal Strike, he did appear with his Black Swordsman cloak. So, yeah, it's, um... That's why. It's, it's an iconic move. And it's also probably the one move he never taught Yu-Gi-Oh! Or at all, because Yu-Gi-Oh! like that. And, yeah. So, him finally waking up. Kirito's finally out of his chair. Or off the ground. And now he's a Mary Sue. I'll just spoil it. You can just flat out tell he's a Mary Sue. For gosh sakes, um, Poe is going to literally attack him and a hand pops out of nowhere to block them and then he walks up and his arm comes back. I was reading, I remember reading that in the book and the whole scene was literally like an overpowered Mary Sue scene. Although what he did kill Poe, what happened to Poe, Prince of Hell, was so grateful. It was so gratifying what happened to Gabriel and Poe, Prince of Hell. Those were, even though he's Mary Sue, what he did to them was perfect. That they got their comeuppance in the most gruesome, horrible way, and I'm glad of it. Spoiler, sorry. But, yeah, that's my opinion of this episode in a nutshell. And this is what I was waiting for. I wanted to see this adaptation of the one part. I already got my good adaptation stuff in back in season one all the way up to the administrator's death, and then the Alice scene where you see how he's in the wheelchair, and then they leave that alone. Although I will say, they were pretty brutal in this scene. Like, I mean... Leafa getting a spear shoved through her eye in the one last episode, that was pretty brutal, and Xion getting her legs cut off. Yeah, they've kind of, they've kind of kept all the brutality in it. I didn't like they put Inji in it. That was the only downside to that one episode, so I'm not going to talk about that. No, I'm not going to talk about the Inji scene and orbital scale on how stupid orbital scale is. But that's beside the point. I just thought I'd explain in a video, explain why Kirito is the way he is in this episode, or this arc, why it took what he did to wake up and explain the flashbacks and all the other stuff he sees, because that's, I've, I've pretty much explained it in a nutshell. Basically, Kirito's arc, that's his arc in a way. It's, it's, it's basically him getting over all the trauma and stuff that he developed in Sword Art Online, the very original thing, and since then. And he concludes his arc in this. Now, honestly, at volume 18, I think you should have ended it. You could have had the, the side story thing like you did in volume 8, 
which I think maybe 19 is. I'm not sure. I don't know. But after, because I kind of stopped reading it, thought it volume 18. Because you ended perfectly. Where it ends is a perfect book close end. So if you're reading light novels, I wouldn't have ever gone past 18. It was a bookend. Everything bookended nicely. Ah. Oh. This is your host, as always, me, the Mad Reviewer, signing off. If you like this thing, hit the like, subscribe, blah, 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 blah. You know the good, good thing that every YouTuber says. Although, if you make it here, in the comment section, I always read what you have to say. What you want me to make next, please write down, and I will make a video on it. Till then, this is your host, signing off. See ya!